Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Katie and welcome to the Bookish Adventure. So today we are doing a book review and it has been a while, I think, since I've done a book review. And today we are reviewing City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Mortal Insurance series. So I'm gonna do my best right now, thinking happy thoughts, not getting angry and using my indoor voice. If you've seen any of my weekly reading vlogs covering either this book or the first one, City of Bones, or have seen my City of Bones book review, you all know my feelings towards this. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> won't lie oh gosh um okay so i will do a spoiler free section first i don't know if i will need a spoiler section but i might do just to elaborate on things so if you don't know which is probably unlikely but if you don't know what the mortal instrument is about it is this huge massive series based around the shadow hunters and they are nephilims and they basically fight the good fight <laughs> they fight evil so and you have things like down models, you know werewolves vampires and a whole host of creatures now the main sort of plot at least for the first three books of this series centers around valentine and his search to get a hold of the, the mortal instruments and take everyone down he is a bad guy suave and smooth but he's a bad guy nonetheless and it focuses around some teenagers who are shadow hunters and clary who discovers that she is part of this world and her human friend simon so my problem with the first book they're all a bunch of dicks was kind of a problem i didn't like any of the characters they were awful they were annoying i hated all of them particularly our mains jason clary i just could not deal with them isabel i could deal with simon was pretty fine magnus i liked alec kind of walked a line of i'm not sure but on the whole it was pretty tough i did give city of bones three stars it was a very generous three stars because i loved the world she created and i was really interested in it and just the general lore and mythology of that world i just really liked and i was really eager to get more into it so my expectations for the second book was to a just like it i just wanted to like it i really want to like this series because they have been on my tbr since i think i was like 15 years old so well over 10 years i just keep forgetting to read them i keep forgetting to pick them up and i see them everywhere i see how popular they are bookstagram booktube everywhere but it still hasn't been enough for me to finally read them so i had a lot of expectations going into this thinking it wouldn't be great and i was gonna love it and i was like oh it is a similar <laughs> similar problem with this second book so i hate them less definitely hate them less my f feelings towards jace are still the same i truly really do not like him i want to like him i want to feel sorry for him i want to have some sort of empathy towards him but his attitude although yes he probably is masking how he feels there are just no moments of vulnerability where i feel like i could be like oh my god you poor baby like i just don't ever get that and it's really disappointing because i am aware that it's obviously not far after the first book so obviously i'm not expecting leaps and bounds in the terms of you know personal development but i just feel like after the events of the first one it just would have been nicer to have a little bit more of just you know less dickishness after the events of the previous book, the Clave are naturally suspicious of Jace and instead of wanting to be useful and helpful and being like, look, I get it why you would be, but let me prove to you that it's not the case. And no, he just has to act out and act like an idiot. And it's just really just frustrating. Clary wise, definitely less annoying this time around. However, this is a big however, they were in general less annoying. I didn't find myself hating her as much, but I constantly found that they were doing and thinking really dumb things and a lot of the time i was waiting for the penny to drop for a lot of characters like it was a very obvious thing that was being spelled out and i was like guys come on just like use your brains in terms of plot i don't know where the plot was i really don't it was the continuation of Valentine and his hunt for the mortal instruments he has one in the previous and he's going after a second one and what you would think would be the driving force of this book which is the hunt for Valentine that is the main plot but a series of other things happen around it involving Simon and involving Jace and his issues with the clave and his family and stuff happening with Clary and Luke and like stuff happening in their home it is a bunch of things happening that is literally all the book is there it's just a bunch of things happening like the plot isn't the strongest driving force like i never felt like there was an urgency i never felt like there was this kind of we have to find him we have to hunt him down that there just wasn't any 
near that. My hopes for this book were going to be a obviously the continuation of that. The first one was introducing Clary and us to the world of the Shadowhunters. So I was hoping in this one that we would see more of that world, maybe get a bit more involved in it. But I guess because it is so, I guess because not much time has passed since the first book, that still isn't really something that's happening really. Clary is getting a better sense of like perhaps who she is in regards to the Shadowhunters and what she can do. But there isn't much in the way of like being immersed more in that world which I was really disappointed about but you kind of do learn a bit more about the clave and a bit more of sort of Valentine's agenda and where he comes from it's nice that you have chapters from his point of view because you get to learn what his mind is like and how he thinks and he's very smooth in the way he convinced me you can see why people followed him but he is very black and white it is very strange I like him as a villain he he is very it's this it's that that's it and I really like that in him there is no gray it's just that's it so yeah the plot just wasn't happening for me I just there just didn't feel like that sense of urgency uh, going back sorry about how I said about character development a lot of stuff happened in the first one and Simon really proved his worth as a human going up against this world of unknown and downworlders and you know coming up against demons and vampires and wolves he has kind of taken this in his stride like he should be having a mental breakdown and humans are constantly referred to as mundane and he would turn up with Clary and Alec or whoever would or particularly Jace would always be like oh who brought the mundane and I just feel like Simon has earned just that little bit of respect because he saved them at one point in the first book you know he has been really resilient he has just bounced back from everything that has been thrown at him all the craziness he has just been like cool yeah let's just keep going and I just found that really disappointing that there wasn't just that maybe saying oh look it's the mundane but secretly you know winking to him like so yeah that was quite disappointing as well I did give this book like 2.5 stars and to be honest I probably should have given City of Bones the same I just think I had really high expectations for this series so it's quite difficult going forward I have decided to read it as two trilogies I wasn't really aware that that was a thing after talking to my friend she suggested that that'd be a good idea so reading the first three then going into the Infernal Devices the prequel and then coming back to these I also spoke to her sister and she said the latter three are better and I'm probably likely to enjoy them more. I feel like I'm putting myself through some serious trials here just to get to the next set of books in the hope that it gets better because I am so so interested in this world that she's created and the hype that ensues around them and obviously she still have new new books that are coming out so I think I'm gonna give it this one and the next lot and if I can't get into it then I may just have to call it quits which is so disappointing. I did also listen to this book on audiobooks and I don't know if that was a good idea I did not like the lady who was narrating it she was fine in general but it was the second she had to do um Clary or Isabel's voice it was just so 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 cliche teenager it was just quite painful so the upside of these books is that everything is very descriptive and and stuff so there wasn't a lot of that which was thank god i don't really know how i feel about going forward to the next book um I, there is no real excitement i mean i read the first one last year and it just didn't really do anything for me which is probably why i never picked it up again last year and i was more invested in reading throne of glass because that just had me this year i'm trying to make more of a conscious effort or I just really want to try but I think having made the decision to break into two parts I think it's definitely helping the thought of having to read six books of potential just trash I'm like okay there is obviously still the relationship issues with Jason Curry and the sort of the forbidden love thing obviously if you've seen the series you know what the issue is I've only still seen the first series I still need to watch the rest and I did enjoy the first series and I think that didn't help I quite enjoyed it I didn't find them as annoying then reading the books I was just like oh my god and I have often said and I've often thought if I had read these when I was 15 would I have liked them would I've enjoyed them more and honestly I think I can say I think I would still feel the same I think I might have been maybe more tolerant but I know I would still find them annoying because at the moment I'm just not finding anything redemptive about Jace to excuse his behavior you know you're kind of hoping that fine from the other people's point of views like Clary's and Simon's him being a dick and that's what he's doing but then you just you hope that when it's his turn and for his part you're hoping for okay like we're gonna have him actually emotionally conflicted and feeling bad for saying 
reading this and there's just none of it. I will say though, it is actually a pretty quick read. It was like 399 pages, I think. And I was obviously listening to it on audiobooks, but I suddenly realized I had read quite a lot. And before I realized it in a very short space of time, I was halfway through the book. And even when I sat down and actually read it, I realized I hadn't read a massive chunk in such a short space of time. So it is a really quick read. I think it is a good way to get into the world because the mortal instruments, they are much smaller in comparison to the rest of the books. I don't know about the latter three, but from my memory, I think they're not as beefy as the others. So it is a good way to get into it. Just yeah, going forward, I just really want more of the world building and just having Clary because obviously Valentine is still going to be a driving force of this series. So what I really want right now is just more exploration of the world and more of Clary getting involved. I just guess the problem of it being such a a continuously short timeline that's where the room for development and plot progression and diving into this sort of thing is a little bit difficult i did find that in the first book i just felt like clary was just being told all this highly secretive and private information for our sake because we needed to know about it because i just felt like information came too easily to her so upon reflection i hated them less than i did the first time round, except for jace i didn't find it like dragging nails on a chalkboard to read it last year when i read the first book i I did find it a bit of a chore to read but I think that was the initial hit of oh my god like this is not what I thought like I thought this was going to be better so the second time around I didn't have that as much I had the expectation I knew that I was going into it like okay this is going to be a tough one and I feel just like <laughs> I feel like I'm saying just bad bad things and that I there's a sniper train somewhere on me because I'm just besmirching this series but Honestly, I want to love it and I really do. But right now, I just think maybe the Mortal Instruments just isn't a series for me. I'm just hoping that the Infernal Devices and the newer ones, I'm just really hoping that they will be because my friends have read them and her sister read them and they really like them and they are people whose opinion I really just like. Okay, well, they think they're good. Although Beth is rereading Twilight right now. So actually, I don't think I can trust their judgment. And they're just people who I'm like, okay, if you liked it, I'm probably going to be okay with it. It's just getting past that expectation of I thought it would be better because I'm constantly always seeing stuff about it on like bookstagram or instagram about this amazing series people who love Jay so I'm just like really what am I not seeing so maybe in the latter three maybe he gets better maybe I'll look back at this while making reviews and do my weekly reading vlogs of the last three books like oh my god this series is amazing what was wrong with me but you know I'm not gonna hold up too much hope that is me done as predicted I didn't really need a spoiler section it just is not worth to be honest going into it and to be honest right now I would rather be watching Killjoys than having to keep talking about this damn book. If you enjoyed this video regardless of whether or not you agree with my opinion please hit that like button and show your support. As always comment below do you agree with me or am I just talking absolute crap or are you like no yeah I totally get it. If you're new then hit the subscribe button and of course ding the bell to never miss a video. I hope you had a good weekend and I hope you stayed safe. I will see you on Thursday for another weekly reading vlog.